Salutations, citizens. I'm Grim Falcon 746, and today we are taking a close look at the Anvil Valkyrie dropship. As a note here, I'm going to say this. We are reviewing ships based on their role, not the use of that role in the game right now. Therefore, a dropship is being reviewed as a dropship, and we're going to politely ignore that there is effectively no use of a dropship in the game at this time. Stay tuned for the flight tests, loadout, ship tour, and of course, the final verdict. The Valkyrie is a rugged, high-performance ship, capable of carrying up to 20 personnel and a vehicle into and out of the combat zone. The vertical takeoff and landing thrusters allow fast and precise landing zones, and the devastating array of weaponry blurs the line between dropship and gunship. Alright, let's dive into the flight tests. While I do like how they pack both troop and vehicle transport, as well as gunner seats, into a ship of this size, you definitely feel the weight and size in the way of handling. It doesn't handle terribly, but I was hoping for better handling than I got. Especially considering this is a dropship, being able to weave into or out of a good drop area could become important. As for the in-space handling, while it does get better, it was still lacking from what I would have expected. Maybe that's just me though. Again, the handling isn't atrocious, it's just not good. That being said, I think the use in space will be largely jumping into and out of the combat zones, not trying to scrape station paint like I'm doing here, so the in space handling is probably good enough. But if you are going to be a little lighter on the agility, you'd better be able to either take or dish out some punishment. So how does the Valkyrie do in that regard? Well, it comes equipped with a stock 800 burst pilot DPS, 443 sustained and 80 alpha damage. The turret DPS is 4088 burst, 3484 sustained, and it takes 414 alpha damage. For a total output of 4888 burst DPS, 3927 sustained, and 494 alpha damage. If the ship is fully staffed, that's not bad damage output, even with no missiles equipped. Now for the weapons and components. The Valkyrie does come equipped with two CF-227 Badger Laser Repeater Nose Turrets, six CF-337 Panther Laser Repeater Man Turrets, and two Yellow Jacket GT-210 Ballistic Gatling Man Door Guns. Its components include two size 2 full stop military grade C shields, for a total shield HP of 18,000, two size 2 Maelstrom military grade C power plants, two size 2 Arctic military grade C coolers, and a single size 2 Odyssey civilian grade C quantum drive. It also has a total HP of 44,053, meaning this beast can not only deal out a ton of damage when fully staffed, but it can also take a beating, ensuring ground forces arrived intact. As for changes, I would change out the two full stop shields for ramparts. This will increase your shield pool from 18,000 to 20,750, and the Odyssey Quantum Drive for the XL Wand Quantum Drive. This will cut your quantum time in half, and you will still have enough fuel to go from Microtech to Arcor. I don't normally say this, but the weapons are probably right for this vehicle. You could make a case for swapping out the door turrets as they are ballistic, but considering the use case for them, I think that is the one case where the ballistic Gatling is okay. So we have covered the numbers and handling. Let's get out of the pilot seat and actually take a look at this thing. We will start at the back, moving in through the ramp. We have the vehicle bay. Past the vehicle bay, we have two side entrances of the ship, along with the mounted door guns. Past that, we have the personnel compartments, each one holding 10 soldiers. And past that, we have the first of the manned turrets. This is the below deck turret. Exiting through the second personnel compartment, we have the other 10 seats for the soldiers. And up the ladder and to the right, we have the crew area, along with the beds for each of the members. Directly behind the ladder, we have another gunner seat. This one is the above deck turret. And on the other side of the ladder, we have the laboratory. Moving towards the pilot seat, we have a port side remote turret. And of course, we have the same remote turret on the starboard side. Moving forward, we get to the pilot seat. And entering the pilot seat, we have a semi-decent field of view along with six MFDs. Although you do have to turn to see the two on the edges, I think four is probably enough for most cases, and some of the less used screens could be moved to the edges. As for the pros, the Anvil Valkyrie comes with good HP and shields, can deal out a noticeable level of damage when fully staffed, has high troop capacity as well as a vehicle bay for ground vehicle. Also, as it is a dropship, the high DPS will help with covering fire for the troops as they deploy. The cons are sluggish handling, pilot field of view could be better, I also wouldn't mind some missiles, but that's probably not necessary for a dropship, and the pilot-only DPS is quite low for a ship of this size. 
The Valkyrie will run you over 4.4 million AUC in the game and $375 on the pledge store. So is it worth the price? Only looking at its ability to perform dropship duties, I would say yes, it would be worth the price. Again, we are politely ignoring the fact that there's no effective use for it in the game at this time. Thank you for watching my review of the Anvil Valkyrie dropship. If you like this video, please consider liking it, leaving a comment, and of course subscribing to the channel, as all of that does really help us out. Let me know what ships you want to see reviewed, and of course what other videos you may want to see. And until next time, keep flying, stay safe, and don't do anything I wouldn't do.